Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 253 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, great news, Keelan's back. Yeah, yeah woohoo, Keelan's back. Uh, bad news, Rosie's still here. Boo. Nah, all good. She adds a female perspective <laughs> to the show, which has been needed for many years. You need someone who's going to sit there and be like, me and my vagina disagree. Facts. Facts, <laughs> right? So, uh, Keelan, yep. congratulations, mate. You've been promoted. Fuck yeah. Uh, do, would it. you like to know what your new role is? What is it? Sitting on the floor watching me do this. <laughs> yeah, woohoo! And just laughing. Am I getting paid? No, oh. not at the moment. We, we might have figured that out at some point. Oh. But, uh, hey, guys, support me on Patreon so Keelan can get paid for this role of <laughs> sitting on the floor and laughing. Because right now he doesn't have a desk. He doesn't have a chair. I mean, Rosie's got her own chair. She's got her own desk. It's a standing desk. I'm getting out extension cables. Yeah, I said to you yesterday that I would get a desk out of the garage, and I just didn't do it. Yeah. Um, so. Cool. Well, thank you for having me. That's all right, man. Don't don't spill anything because you'll electrocute yourself. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are sitting on cables. Don't drink that. Um, yeah. Look. So, uh, Keelan's. Properly moved on to Luke and Lewis now. He's five days a week, but uh, he is going to stick around uh, Spearhead Sunlies. But he will be, I would say, literally doing fuck all. <laughs> because we've been joking about that for years, about how Keelan does absolutely fucking nothing here. But the joke was he worked very hard. Now he does fuck all. He sits on the floor and laughs. Really, Keelan's... <laughs> Just here for his own entertainment. He's like, oh, I just really, I just really want to watch the show and and be here. And uh, I'm like, oh, do you want to edit the show? He's like, nah. <laughs> so he's gonna sit here and do fuck all. Welcome, congratulations on your promotion, living the dream. I would say, I'd say this is Keelan's always been Keelan's dream is just to sit and watch but do nothing. Live studio audience. That's Ke that's Keelan's role now. He's this. He's the entire audience of the show. So uh, yeah, he'll be sticking around uh, unless he's busy like he was last week. Um, uh, yeah. So actually, I didn't even get an invite last week. Oh well, it was an exclusive uh, audience-free episode. <laughs> That show and and look, man. Uh, I would say that uh, the the show is a lot better without you. <laughs> I would say that this not only is the show it's a higher quality, it's also produced a lot better as well. Now that you're completely hands off, uh, you know there hasn't been a single mistake uh, since you've left the show. Not a single mistake. In fact, uh, I if I just quickly skim through here, if I just skip right to the very end of. Uh, the uh, last week's episode. Appreciate it. I'll see you at a show and uh, you won't be pissed on. Thank you very much. See you later. Have a shit one. Yeah, have a, have a little break and then we'll do the Patreon version. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how the... Uh, and Rosie, how could you let that happen? Oh, yeah, Rosie, you go home. I'll edit it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the episode ended. And can I say I've never been more disappointed in... I've spilled coffee everywhere. Fuck! Um, I've never been more disappointed in, in Rosie and, and her editing there because, look, it's your job to make sure that I am not trusted to handle anything, Rosie. That's your strike one, all right? Strike two, I spilled coffee on the carpet. You should have told me I couldn't be trusted putting that down there on the carpet. That's strike two. So you're on your final warning. You better not cop it during this episode or you'll be swapping places with Keelan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's, you know, but that's like, I think that's, you know, some might call it a mistake. I might call it an inside glimpse to how the show's produced where Rose is like, great work. Let's do the Patreon. And then Lewis goes, I can't be fucked. Let's do it later. Um, and we did do it later. And we did record it, and it's a great episode, but then I, I never uploaded it. So, guys, this week on Patreon, you're getting two episodes. Because uh, last week you got zero, but this week you're getting two. So, now's a great time to jump on the Patreon, because not only are, are you going to get uh, a bonus Patreon episode, you're going to get two. So, uh, check that out, and uh, the secret uh, episodes, or the Sunday supplement, will be pumping out. Uh, now, time to get into something very important. 
uh, something I feel very passionate about, something we've spoken about many times on this show, and that is uh, coffee cup sizes, okay? Uh, I've just moved in, you know, in my new area in Frankston, the, the jewel of the South, um, <laughs> as, it's been, as it's been known. Uh, many people call it the jewel of the South, not because it's, it's like a nice place to live, but mostly because there's, there's lots of jewelry heists uh, and crystal meth around. Uh, that's the jewel that everyone's really chasing. Um, and uh, lovely area, really nice. Um, only seen the police a few times. <laughs> like, I've only seen the police in my street uh, lots. And that's a great sign because that's, that's evidence that Frankston is, is uh, getting better before my eyes, you know? Like other places, they don't see the police at all. So really, your area is done. It's not, it's not going to get any better than what it is now. You're not going to see your area blossom and become a better place. I'm watching Frankston gentrify before my eyes. I'm watching uh, the police target people with lower income before my very eyes, and I see that, and as a, as a newly, um, as, as a newly uh, indoctrinated liberal voter, as I'm a homeowner now, I have to vote liberal, I see that and I go, good, get them out, shoot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm happy that friendly Geordie's lost that defamation case because, uh, as a, as a newly indoctrinated national voter, cause you know, um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm also attending the freedom rally. It's just, it's just part of the, uh, it's part of the thing. Um, look, I love this area. I always have. And I have to say this. The one bad thing about this area is my local cafe, the cup sizes. What are you guys doing? This is not a, this is a large. I ordered this and it's a large. This is what they call a large. That's a small, medium at best. The cup sizes are ridiculous. These cafes need to sort their fucking shit out. And th this is a nationwide problem. Cafes, sort out your cup sizes, okay? Don't run a cafe that has two cup sizes, small and large. What are you doing? Have three, and they have to be small, medium, large. That's how it goes. Don't catch, don't let me catch you having two sizes, small and large. That's fucked, all right? That's ridiculous. But even worse than that is having three cup sizes and going small, large, extra large. Wrong. It's small, medium, large, or close your cafe. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Small, medium, large, or close your cafe. I went in Hobart. This is a nationwide problem. In Hobart, my favorite cafe, right? Best coffee. They had three cop coffee cup sizes. Now, you might be thinking, oh, great. Small, medium, large. That makes sense. Because you have your small size and you have your large size. And what's the medium between those two sizes? A medium. That's literally what it means. Between the two. Medium. That's math, baby. I failed high school, but I know my shit. I can run a cafe, small, medium, large, or shut down. The place in Hobart, they, <laughs> they did. did small, right? Good. Great job. They did medium. Love your work. Keep it up. And they did Wellington. Oh, what the fuck is Wellington? What does that even mean? That's the worst one. <laughs> Wellington. And I've even gone there. I'm not, I'm fucking 27 years old. I'm a homeowner. I'm not going to say Wellington. I'm an adult, right? Don't make me say Wellington. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Can you Google what that means? Mount Wellington. Oh, Mount, well, get fucked. Close your cafe. Oh, this cup's as big as a mountain. <laughs> it's a Wellington-sized cup. Fuck you. Close your cafe. You don't deserve a license to serve coffee. It's a large. <laughs> Fuck you. I went there and I ordered, and I don't play their games. I don't feed into it. I refuse to reward this behavior. I'll never say it. I walked in and I said, hi, can I get a large? And she goes do you mean this one? And she pointed at the medium. I said, well, that's a medium. <laughs> I, I literally corrected the bitch. I said, well, that's a medium. And she goes, oh, well, sometimes people say large and they mean the one in the middle. I'm like, well, those people are fucking stupid and you, you shouldn't give them coffee. You should just give them boiling water and watch them burn their mouths so they learn a lesson. 
so they can't speak anymore because that's dumb shit and I don't I don't tolerate it, right? I go, no, that's a medium. And she and I said, I just want I want the large. And she goes, Do you mean the Wellington? I said, bitch, do you mean a large? What what are you talking? I said, yeah, give me the Wellington. And then every time I went in there, I would say large and they didn't understand what I meant. Don't treat me like I'm crazy when you've named a cup after a mountain. That's insane shit. It's not the worst I've seen. I've talked about this on the show before and the worst one I've ever heard of was someone sent me a photo of a cafe or some regional cafe. These are the two worst, right? One that I've seen, it went small, great, large, wrong, bucket, close your cafe, small, medium, large, bucket, not funny, I'm, no one's laughing, right, but the worst one I ever saw was small, correct, medium, love your work, big fella, dude, i the big fella, yeah, get a mate, can I get a big fella cappuccino, if I had to say that, if I walked into a cafe and I was like, hey, can I get a, a large? And they went, do you mean the big fella? You know what I would do? I would walk out of the cafe and into traffic. Because I'm not going to say, you know, the big fella. I will allow, right, if you have a fourth size, I'll allow some creativity. That's fine, right? I would, honestly, I would prefer extra large. But I'll allow a funny name if you have four sizes. Because when you have like a, a, a larger than a large size cup... Ordering that is silly, so you can have a bit of fun, you know? Like, uh, like, how about this? Small, medium, large, wake-up call. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a bit of fun, and I will allow it. But if you go small, large, wake-up call, I might throw a brick through your window because that's not behavior that should be tolerated by Australians in this country. I'm saying it now. I'm putting the foot down. Small, medium, large, or close your cafe. And the only thing that's, uh, and I would say that having two cup sizes is, uh, is also bad. Have three, you know? That's what I would say. Because otherwise you just get stuck between, you get something that's way too small or something that's not big enough. And you're like, man, I wanted a large. You know what I did the other day? The other day I ordered two, two larges. <laughs> I almost did that today. And that's, that's what I've done today. today. I went in this morning. I've already been to this cafe. I went this morning before you got here. And then you were like, oh, let's go to the cafe. I'm like, oh, well, I've had 50% of my <laughs> caffeine requirements. And they've tricked me. Now I'm spending $10. I want to spend $6.50 max. Because two is too much. I'm not going to finish this now. I need to get a large and a small. But then their ice latte is like huge. Their ice latte is massive. Maybe I should ask for it in the ice latte cup. Look, I mean, look at Rosie's cup. Right? What the fuck is that? Look at my massive hand. I can hold this in my fist. Way too small. That's like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Do these cafes hate money? Look, the point is, Spearhead Sundays is back. All right? You know it's back when I spend 13 minutes screaming about a cafe. <laughs> the show has returned. We are back. And uh, to, if, if any of you were wondering about whether or not Spearhead Sundays is back and in peak form, let's get into this, all right? Let's get into this. This is how you really know Spearhead Sundays is back. Guys, I'm trying to get my driver's license. <laughs> I'm trying. And look, I, this, is the fir this is the first time I've ever told the truth about my license and, the only re and it's not my fault that I haven't got it this year. And that's the only time I've ever been telling the truth. And, or, and I will say this, that since I was 18, which is nine years ago, right? Every year I said, oh, I haven't got my license, but it's because I've been busy. I was lying, okay? I'll, I'll say that now. I'm an, I'm an adult. I'm coming clean. Every single year, I wasn't really trying to get my license. I was just talking about it, you know? <laughs> I was. I was just talking about it to get everyone else on my back and then scooping up those sweet free rights, right? But this year... This year, right? Well, I, would, I was going to say that you have been demoted, Keelan, to floor sitter, but you, you know, you still drive me around a bit. <laughs> bit of a chauffeur too, so that's good. You know, you still got that in you. Um, this year is the only year I can truly, honestly say that I was trying to get my driver's license and it's not my fault that I haven't got it. COVID made it illegal, not an essential activity. I would say that learning to drive is a pretty essential activity 
for like people who want to become adults. You ever think about like we've been, I feel like everyone who's who was 16 when lockdown started two years ago or like 18 months ago, none of them would have their license maybe. Yeah, and it's always been a huge waiting list pre-COVID. So I feel like it, even when I get to a point where I can drive, which I was almost at, I was doing lessons every single week. I was just paying a guy to come to my house, pick me up, fuck me, suck me, and then take me for a drive. And and that was good because, uh, because you know, you know how it is. It gets lonely during quarantine. Oh. Um, but he was also a great driving instructor. Uh, and I truly, honestly hope he doesn't listen to this show <laughs> because then he'll hear that. Um, but I was like so close uh, to getting my license. Uh, all I needed to do was learn how to park and I feel like I would have been there and then uh, lockdown happened for like fucking nine months and I've, I now I feel like I've got to start again, which I will do. But I feel like now... I really, I want to get my license by Feb. And I think I have to get my license by Feb because if I don't, my driver's license will, ex learner's permit will expire. That shit's valid for 10 years. And I'm at the point now where I might have to go back and get a new driver's license photo taken and renew it for another 10 years, which is dangerous because that just extends the deadline. <laughs> I think, I'm going to say it right now, I will not get my learner's permit renewed. So if I don't get it before it expires, I'm never going to drive for the rest of my life. And that's, and that's my motivation. Or a great reason to not do it because I'm like, oh, well, I guess you just have to drive me everywhere. That's, that's just how it is, guys. Uh, so I'm, look, I'm looking forward to getting it and I will, I will be keeping myself accountable. On this show, I'm going to tell you every episode, at the end of the episode what my driver's lesson was like every single episode and Keelan's going to sit there on the floor and fact check me he'll I guarantee you this I guarantee you two things this is the new era of spearhead Sundays the first guarantee I will get my license the second guarantee Keelan will never get a chair <laughs> he will always be on the floor I'm not joking by the way he's literally on the floor um Mr. Beast uh, has done Squid Game. I think that's so cool. And I really want, I, re I haven't watched it yet, but I really hope he kills someone at the end. I really do hope that he does that. I think that that should, like, how good would it be? Because I, I skimmed through the video. I'm going to watch it later, but I skimmed through it just before because it's like 25 minutes. And it's like, you know, you don't want to be yelled at by a guy with a mustache for 25 minutes. That's what this show is, but... It's more of an hour. <laughs> uh, I skimmed through it. The sets are incredible. Like the set where he, the, the, the main cool one, the glass platform thing where you step on a platform and it's either sturdy or you're going to fall through it. That one's great because I feel like uh, someone could actually die on it. You know, I really think that how good would it be if someone actually died? That's just a screenshot, but look at the sponsor in the background. Brawl Stars. Wow. Is it, what is this, an app? Yeah, that's great. I mean, how much do they... I, I think that Mr. Beast is going to be at a point where brands just won't be able to afford to sponsor his videos. He's doing something that, like, no one has ever done. That video, I honestly think, it just came out today. It did a million views in 10 minutes. I think, what is it sitting on now? Like, fucking five? Four million views. I think that that video hits 50. I really think that maybe even more. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it hits 100 million. 10 million in four hours. Yeah. 10 million in four hours. Oh, this is going to 100. His most popular video is 151 million. Yeah, I think this hits 100 within like the first week. I actually think that. And, I'm, and because also... You, shh. You got to think. <laughs> you got... <laughs> Sorry. You got to think that he's translating this into all of the different languages as well, which I actually think Netflix may have racked that idea from him. I think that if you can release 
Has he released the foreign language ones on the same day? Right, yeah. I think that's like, I think that is such a, like a future part of everyone's YouTube business is dubbing shit in different languages. The Spanish one, like four months ago, it's got 27 million views. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's getting tens of millions of views. He uploaded one yesterday, it's got five million views. And you think about like, everyone's like, oh, how does he make money in these videos? He, he doesn't make money on the, the first video, right? But... If I, if I spend, you know, a million dollars on a video and it makes a million dollars, right? I'm at zero. But then all I have to do is pay like a few voice actors and translators, what? Like maybe five, ten grand max to translate it and upload it. And then it does 26 million views in Spanish. It might do fucking uh, 10 million views in Russian. I'm seeing he's doing Russian. He hasn't even done like Japanese or imagine if he does fucking Chinese, like how big that could be. He's doing Portuguese as well. Portuguese, like there's no limit. Like you do German, uh, you could do French. There's, you could do Italian. There's so many like massive languages that no one's creating for or no one in those countries have the resources to do types of videos like that, that he does. Like imagine if he released one in Australian, like it would just fucking explode g'day cunts today i'm recreating the fucking squid game eh, Shay? he also does like his gaming channel and his reacts channel yeah, yeah. gaming, gaming channel, channel reacts, reacts channel, channel. That, that guy, guy fucking printing cash yeah yeah, yeah. he's, he's like, like absolute people are like oh he doesn't make it he doesn't make any money on his main channel it's not about that it's merch it's the gaming videos it's the reaction videos it's the translator videos like 26 million views on like a foreign language channel that's like he's making hundreds and thousands of dollars off those uploads. And but those uploads would only cost him like maybe five or ten grand to make max. And that'd be if he was paying people well by choice. Right? So it's it's such a such a genius business that that guy runs. It's so cool. And I think that I don't know where he goes from here. That's the only downside of what he's doing is how the fuck does he top this? Like he spent millions on this Squid Game video and it makes sense. It's not like he's he's overspending. He built sets, not even fucking Squid Game built sets. It's all green screen there. You know that podcast he did with Colin and Samir where he said that he yeah. Yeah. approached Netflix and they denied him? Yeah. yeah. They could have had this and imagine yeah. how many people would have signed up to Netflix to watch... Yeah, they do, like Netflix is like absolutely fumbling the bag by not giving like some network should give him like fifty million dollars to do whatever the fuck he wanted, and they'll make it back and let him put it on YouTube. Like that's the thing. Like if they if if you're if you're Netflix and you give this guy fifty million and he can upload like segments of twenty minute episodes to his channel. Like, that's such a massive return on investment. I don't understand why they wouldn't do that. I think, I don't know, they might just, I think it's like they just don't get it. Like, they don't understand it. And also maybe he, maybe, you know, honestly, maybe it wouldn't work. Like, if you did Mr. Beast, but with really beautiful cameras and really well edited stuff and really like made it professional and corporate and, and like really made it look like TV... Maybe it wouldn't work. Like part of the charm of Mr. Beast is like it's just regular people, and it's like it's it's as big as it is. Even though he's spending millions of dollars on you on on the videos, it's definitely still a YouTube video. It's not like uh, like you know when like College Humor when they first blew up, they were making like shitty sketches and they're really funny, but they were film shitty and they were and they were weird, and then they went super professional and everything was really well lit and really well done and it looked like SNL which it looked amazing but it loses some of its charm like some of the charm of YouTube is shit production like you watch it and you're like I could do that you know like I could make a Mr. Beast video I just couldn't do the money aspects of it like if the video was you know, playing a squid game in my backyard, I could definitely recreate how it's shot and how it's edited 
for sure. I just couldn't do the crazy prize money thing. I think that's the charm of it is that it's like as big as it is, it's still real. And I think that's what he's never lost sight of because there is that like thing in every YouTuber and I do this as well. Of like, man, I want my stuff to look better. I want to do cooler things. I want a better camera. I want cooler lighting. I want a proper studio. And like those are cool things, but sometimes that's like for you and not for the audience. Like that's what I kind of realize is like there's there's like kind of a there, I would what I want to do is I want I really want my stuff to look amazing and I want it to be edited well and I want to have like a like a cool space but I never want to look like TV on this channel. I would much rather look like a really great YouTube channel, a really great uh, comedian and do really cool stand up clips and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to be releasing like Netflix specials every single week. Like I don't want my clips to look like movies. I want them to look real. Um, and then I would much rather put that desire to create something super professional and super well done into projects like Spears vs. America or, or into Death Threats Don't Scare Me. Like take all of that desire to create something amazing and really well done and put it into like a limited project and then go back to YouTube and be like, oh, this is what I can do with money, but this is what I can do super regularly and it's more real. This is me. Um, this is me. I'm real, brother. Close your cafe. I'll throw rocks through the window. <laughs> um, so I think it's cool. And I think that um, it uh, it really is the only, the only problem that I guess I see Mr. Beast running into is how do you top that? Um, and also like how do other creators compete with that? Like, because you see all these other YouTube channels that are like trying to do what Mr. Beast has done or like trying to do similar style of videos, but it, like it just gets to a point where like, how the fuck can you compete with the money and the team that that dude has? Like he's so smart in the sense that he doesn't do it in LA. He does it in like his, isn't he in his like hometown? North Carolina. North Carolina. He just does it where there's like not much tax. He doesn't collaborate with big YouTubers. He doesn't, he doesn't do these vlogging bullshit. He just gets him and his mates, which is so innately YouTube, just him and his mates who he thinks are funny, and he creates these videos from a warehouse. And the only real difference between someone like, uh, I don't know, I'm a bad example because we create very different content, but like, you know, a regular YouTuber and him is just money. That's the only real difference and the team. The content is pretty similar because it's just like amateurish and scuffed and real. Um, so yeah, I don't know how anyone else competes with that because it's like, it's not, necessarily video quality or production quality. It is just money and team. And there's no way you can like catch up to him. I don't think. Um, <clears throat> but I would be, I would be interested to know how much fucking money like he must be charging these brands. Cause if you can guarantee borderline guarantee, he can guarantee 20 million. Like whatever I do, I know I'm going to get 20 million engaged views. That's more like worthwhile to a brand than a hundred million Super Bowl viewers. I did a podcast with his manager. I think they charge like a million dollars. I think that's cheap. A, mi a million dollars for 20 million views is cheap. The way they did it in this <clears throat> Squid Game video is they did the first three quarters of the video not sponsored. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then, you know, in Squid Game, how they have that card thing where they throw it at the ground. And yeah. Try yeah. Flip it. yeah. Yeah. That segment of the episode was very clearly sponsored and then the last uh, challenge yeah. yeah the sponsorship everywhere and was that sponsored by the same brand or two different ones same brand but yeah, actually yeah. it was it wasn't just like this episode was sponsored it was yeah. Yeah. This segment, segment segment part of the actual show yeah, yeah. So it was like kind of intelligent marketing so maybe yeah that is smart maybe it the goal was to get different segments sponsored by different things or it was just to get one. Who knows? Um, yeah, very interesting. It's, I, I, I'm interested to see where he goes from here. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped, right? The best best ball bag trimmer in the game. I left mine in Tassie. I'm so mad. I'm going to go back December 15th. There's a lot of rumor and hearsay floating around that I'm going back to get up my office chairs that were sent to me and, uh, and my clothes and all of my underwear. You know, I only have three pairs of underwear now. What? Yeah. I only have I only have three, so I am washing them, but I'm gonna have to go fucking buy like bonds or something. <laughs> my balls, uh, my hairy nuts, because I don't have my manscape. 
Lawnmower 4.0, and I'm really devastated about it. I'm not going back to get my underwear. I'm going back to get the trimmer, right? I'm devastated. I need it. I miss you, baby. Come back. Uh, I miss my ball toner. I miss the I miss the smell and feel of my smooth nuts. Um, use code SPEARS for twenty percent off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0 and anything else you want from Manscaped.com. Seriously. Uh, one of the best products that has ever sponsored what I what I do. It's something that I genuinely use all the time and frequently. Manscaped.com, get the Lawnmower 4.0. It's just the best like trimmer in the game. I used to use like a really expensive, nice uh, trimmer that I got from one of those beard uh, and personal groomer shops. It's trash. It hurt me. It cut me. It sucks. I've never had that with the Lawnmower. Really, really, really great stuff. I use it all the time, and you should too. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Great birth, great Christmas present for like a boyfriend. Uh, weird birthday present for like a father. Um, you know, like here, dad, trim your pubes. Kind of funny. Bit of banter. Depends on the relationship with your dad. Uh, a really strange gift for grandma. Like probably could ruin Christmas. If you're like, here, here grandma, shave your balls. You know, that's something that, that like you might think is funny in your head, but then we'll just just really just for, like be responded to with silence from from grandpa. Oh, there's a nose hair trimmer as well, which uh, which is really great. So if you've got a hairy nose, stick that up you and use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping, manscaped.com. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Support the brands that support what I do. Um I uh, my favorite news story of of the week is this Adele interview story. This reminds me so much of me, so much of me. I've done this before, uh, not to this scale, but this guy, Australian media journalist, right from Sunrise, I believe, our morning show here in Australia. He gets uh, sent out to uh, he gets on a plane to interview Adele about her album, right, and he gets there sits down with her. He would have spent like 22 hours on the fucking plane, sits down with her. They start the interview and she finds out that he just has not listened to her album. He didn't listen to it. And she, I love this from her, right? By the way, Channel 7, I believe it was them, paid a million dollars for this interview. One million for an interview with with uh, with <laughs> Adele about a new album. They send out this guy and he doesn't listen to the album gets to the interview and Adele just goes, you didn't listen? Fuck this interview. Kicks him out and doesn't let Channel 7 use the footage to the interview. And it seems like didn't give them their money back either, which I love. He used to be a political reporter at ABC. He used to be a political reporter at ABC. Right. So he was like, I don't want to fucking listen to this album. I've heard Rolling in the Deep. It can't be too different. Surely the same. What does he do? What does he sing about breakup and sadness and it sounds good? No. You know, I never got Adele at all. I never got why she was so big. I never appreciated her at all. I was like, yeah, Rolling the Deep's pretty good, but I never got why she was so good. And then I just recently, I just out of curiosity because everyone was talking about it, I'm like, oh, I'm so fucking sick of Adele. Fine, I'll listen to the new song. The best, the best, the best in the world. I've never heard singing like that in my life and I'm angry at myself for just like dismissing her because uh, I just never really got into singing. Because I, look, this might upset the beehive. Beyonce's, eh, don't like her. She's too loud. Rosie is so angry. She's, she's, it sounds, honestly, singing a lot of the time sounds like just yelling to me. I don't like it. I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm being yelled at. What I really prefer is a guy actually yelling at me, talking about how he's going to stab people to drums. You don't even like her collabs with Jay-Z? Her collabs with Jay-Z are okay. Which ones? Like Crazy, Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love? Nah, I don't. Crazy in Love! Shh! Stop yelling. What are you yelling at me for? I get it. I don't, that's what I don't. You know what? I like Billie Eilish because it's nice and quiet. Sing quiet, you know? And that's, I think it's something about me. Whenever I have like headphones on or even like when the speakers are on and, it, and the singer, male or female, starts really belting, I'm like, it sounds like yelling to me. I might just be wrong. It's probably just a weird thing with me, but I don't like it. And I think that's why I dismissed Adele because all of her early songs were quite loud, whereas the most recent single was pretty quiet. I'm like, that's nice. 
I like that. So maybe it's just I mean, probably just a weird thing. Is anyone else like that where they hear singing and it sounds like yelling? <laughs> I think no one in this. I'm, this is so unrelatable to everyone else in this room. No, I agree. I yeah. prefer like obviously the music I like is a lot more mellow and quiet. So yeah. the singing is like just yeah. fancy talking. Yeah, fancy talking. I really get around like nice talking. Like yeah, guy, okay, this chick's like smooth. I like Lord. She's quiet. I like Billie Eilish. She's quiet. Beyonce makes my ears hurt and makes me upset. Uh, and then Adele, the new, the new shit's like, you know what? Sad Adele. Really get around her. <laughs> like, I really like Adele after she's had a shit month. Like, oh, I've just got, went through a really bad divorce. I really like that Adele. Um, so that's great. I really like her as well because I feel like uh, nothing has come out about the interview, but you know that... Like, if you've ever watched the interview with Adele, she's like, oh, fucking in it. Like, you know she called him a stupid cunt. You listen to my fucking album, you stupid cunt. Get out. You know she said that. I really hope it was a real messy dismissal. Like, she called him a fucking moron, kicked him out. Um, and that reminds me so much of me because so many times the radio station would try and get us to have, like, uh, musical guests or, like, TV guests. Uh, people just, Luke and I just, didn't give a fuck about we had amy shark loved her she was lovely we wanted her on the show it was organic but so many times while we were working at the radio show we go oh we've got this person for you to have on the show and it was really just like sony the music label would come to the radio station and be like hey so uh if you want uh, us to let you play justin bieber you have to interview conrad Sewell on every single show you have we're like, oh, all right, we'll interview Conrad Sewell. And he didn't want to be there. We didn't want to be there. I don't know any of his music. Uh, and it would just be like weird interviews because it was very apparent that neither Luke or I had listened to their songs. But the difference is Conrad Sewell is not Adele, so he couldn't really kick us out and make national news with it. <laughs> um, the last thing that I want to talk about, which I think is very interesting is the Ghislaine Maxwell trial is uh, underway. It's just starting and you wouldn't know that, would you? Because no media outlets talking about it. It's not really trending on any social media platform. Nothing's happening. Like the, one of the biggest like sex trafficking uh, scandals in the world involving like, you know, incredibly famous celebrities, incredibly powerful politicians, some of the richest people on the planet. No one, no media outlet, social media platform or anyone is talking about it and it's just not being discussed at all. Like, that shit's crazy. Jeffrey Epstein, like, gets almost definitely murdered in a prison cell and the only person who knows you know, who would maybe know just almost as much as him is going on trial and we're not seeing anything of it. The Kyle Rittenhouse trial will be live streamed, right? That's national news and shit, you know, as it should be. I totally get that. But this one is not, I don't know. I feel like a lot of this trial is going to be covered up and may even just be sealed. And I think it's really, really suspicious and weird of the powers that be to keep this like under wraps. I'm very interested to see what happens. And a lot and a lot of people are as well. Like there was this Twitter account that popped up one day. Uh, it's called, uh, I think it's called Tracking uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's Trial. Tracking Maxwell Trial. Maybe you shouldn't talk about this because this video might get taken down for a conspiracy. Actually, I'm not being... Really? No, I'm going to talk about it. It's not conspiracy that there's a trial, well, right? I know this is, this is the thing. Like, this is a, a big reason why people don't talk about it is because if you talk about it, the, you're a crazy conspiracy person when it's like, well, if it was conspiracy, there wouldn't, she wouldn't be standing trial. This is the crazy thing about this thing is like, this sex trafficking shit is fucking real. This one is, right? All this chat about like tunnels underneath cities, rubbish. But this one is the real one, right? So I feel like all these people that care about the Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell and, and the connections they have to all of these powerful people, 
This shit's fucking real. Why does he have a, a painting of Bill Clinton in a dress in his house? Can we ask that question without being treated as crazy conspiracy theorists? It's very interesting that Bill flew on his plane many, 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 many times and there was definitely sex trafficking happening on that island and many people definitely visited it and lots of people don't want to talk about it. That's interesting, wouldn't you think? That's real. So it's crazy to me that this is like a conspiracy when it's fucking not because if it wasn't a conspiracy, there would if it was a conspiracy, there would be no trial. If it truly was fake and crazy outlandish conspiracy theory, Epstein would be alive and Ghislaine wouldn't be on trial. But she is. This is fucking real. And it's crazy that you're crazy for talking about it. Like, to me, I feel like this should be nationwide news every fucking day until the trial's over. Like, the most famous and powerful people in the world are all, like, whipped up in this thing. Politicians, billionaires, celebrities... And no outlets talking about it. They'd rather focus on uh, Adele kicking out a journo for not watching, listening to her album. And that's me included, guys. So I will be watching it with keen interest and I'll be talking about it on this, uh, on this uh, podcast. What I was saying was uh, Maxwell Trial Tracker, I think, is the Twitter account. It popped up and, th- and what they've said is they're just going to post about the trial, just facts, uh, like court transcripts and things that happen in court. And this thing got like 400,000 followers in a day. I'm following it. Po- tweet notifications on because you know they won't pop up in your feed. <laughs> I'll be interested to see if that account lasts a week. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be watching that with keen interest. I'll be very interested to see what happens. Um, and uh, I hope that if she spills the beans, it's not like sealed. Uh, I noticed that the only thing that's really happened so far is the trial starting and there's a jury and the judge has said to the jury, do not do your own research, which is a, which is great. But man, they shouldn't because they'll come back to the court case being like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this Ghislaine Maxwell is actually a demon in disguise and she's hiding her wings beneath her sweater. I've read a lot about this Ghislaine Maxwell woman. Um, so yeah, that'll be, I don't know how you could have like a non-biased jury when you're on the fucking Epstein, Ghislaine, Maxwell trial. Like, how could you not have any preconceived notions of, like, the most famous people in the world, politicians and billionaires, and this woman that you've been seeing in the news on and off again for, like, two years? It's very interesting. I'm surprised to see... I'll I'll be interested to see if she survives the trial. She might get a little bit sad, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that's that's the end of that, I think. Uh, What's this? Misfit. Miss, what's that say? Down the bottom. Oh, Miss Lane's bit at the end. Oh, yeah, I have no emails. Can you guys send me uh, life advice questions or stories or questions you'd like me to answer about topics or things or anything? Podcast at loosespears.com. Send me an email because I don't have any. Uh, so if, you, if you've ever wanted me to answer a question or if you have some, if you need some advice, now's the time because if you send it through, you will be the only email in my inbox. Uh, podcast at loosebeers.com. Shoot me an email. Um, I'm going to continue on uh, for the Patreon version of the show uh, now. Um, actually, I'll probably, look, come and clean. I will have a break. But then I'm going to do the Patreon episode uh, uh, in a little bit and uh, that'll be up on Patreon along with last week's episode that should have gone up last week. Sorry about that. Uh, that's uh, that's everyone's fault but mine. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday uh, or I'll see you on Patreon right now and I hope you have a shit one. Bye. Bye.